Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Creative Corner. Today I have for you a special uh, painting. We're going to be doing some watercolor. I'm very new to watercolor myself, so we're going to learn together. But I have some watercolor paper. I also have some watercolor uh, paints, but I also do have special watercolor pens too as well. Uh, so we're going to learn how to do these together. Uh, in today's workshop, we're going to learn uh, a few flowers. Uh, flowers are my specialty. And so uh, we'll go ahead and get started with that. In front of me, I do have a watercolor paper. We're going to start out with a basic flower shape. So in order to do this, you're going to go ahead and draw a small circle On the outer side, uh, depending on the direction you want your flower, you're going to go ahead and draw a larger size circle. Now, I like to think that uh, it kind of looks like an egg when you break it apart. We have the egg yolk surrounded by egg whites. So in order to get the flower petal shape, you want to go ahead and start from the middle and work your way on out towards the sides. You're going to make these half crescent moon shapes. I went ahead and did six. You're more than welcome to do more than that if you would like to. At this point, you're more than welcome to start drawing the, your dimensions of your flower, the petals themselves. And they don't have to be exact, they don't have to be matching, you can do your shapes however you want, just as long as they look like flower petals. As we keep moving, you just want to go ahead and make rough outlines, you don't have to have your heart set on these on these shapes if you don't want to. I went ahead and drew a thin outline for the flower stem. Grabbed one of my erasers and I erased the outer circle outline so that way you can only see the flower petals themselves. Up next, you're gonna go ahead and get yourself your eraser and very lightly erase the lines for the flower petals that you made. You wanna make sure that you're still able to see the lines that you made after you're done erasing. If you can't see your lines, you're more than welcome to grab your pencil again and then just outline your flower petals once more, but very lightly, try not to do the lines too dark, otherwise they will appear in your painting itself. As a good rule of thumb, when you're working with watercolors, you want to start with your lightest color, work your way towards your darkest. So on my paint palette, I do have yellow, which I'm going to start out here in a bit. But you want to prep your paper itself by properly applying water to the surface. Once you've done the water, then you can add the paint itself. Again, I'm working from the lightest color on my palette, which is yellow. And I want to get the shape of the petal that I originally drew. It doesn't have to be exact. When you work with watercolors, the more water you have, the, the lighter your paint is going to be, so it's going to be more translucent or see-through. The less water you work with, the harder it is for the paint to spread on the paper itself.
as you can see here, I went back in with orange to create a cast shadow on my flower just to give it some depth. Next, I went ahead and used some red just to get some more depth of field with the flower petal itself. I got some more water and I'm blending in my orange and yellow a little bit more better. And you're going to go ahead and continue on with the rest of your petals. Again, using the same technique, I'm going to put down yellow down first and work my way to my darkest colors. If you're having a tough time spreading the paint on the paper itself, go ahead and get yourself a little bit more water. And you can see in this past minute or so, I dipped my paintbrush into the water first and then I put the excess amount of water onto the paper towel. You don't want, like I mentioned previously, you don't want too much water um, when you're mixing your watercolor paints. This is just one of the techniques you, you can utilize when you're doing watercolors. I keep dipping my brush into my cup just so that way I can wash off the previous color before I move on to the next color. This is a, just a personal preference of mine. But when you're working with watercolors, you don't want the colors to get all muddy. Then on this part, I'm going back in and blending some of these colors a little bit more better. Watercolors are a little unforgiving when you paint with them unlike acrylic and oil where if you mess up, you can go ahead and go back in and fix it. Watercolors uh, is not like that, so if you do make a mistake, uh, it's going to be hard to fix, if not impossible to fix. So when you do work with watercolor, just be sure uh, you're, you know which color is going to go where. So I went ahead and added all my yellow as the base color for the flower petals I'm working on. I'm going to add a little bit of orange so that way I can give some depth as far as the shading goes. In painting itself, um, there is opaque paints and translucent and semi-translucent paints. So 
yellow itself is very opaque uh, just because it's a primary color. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of tough time with the orange because it is semi-translucent. My final color is red, which I'm adding a little bit more depth into my petals themselves. In this, I had a great difficulty uh, trying to paint upside down because I'm not normally used to painting upside down. And I tested out this color on my hand before putting it down just to make sure it was the right color that I wanted. So I believe the first color I put down was uh, black which came out grayish and this color is more of an indigo color so I try to do a, stip, a, a technique called stippling where you add uh, dots of color onto your, your medium you're working with then you can see I added the shape of my flower stem and I also added a little leaf as well. Going in I did use green for the stem itself. So we're almost done with this painting. Just to recap, uh, we did the flower shape with some circles and some uh, crescent moons. And then we've started with the lightest color, which was yellow, and worked our way towards our darker color, which was red. Now I'm adding some details with green and some blue. You can totally be experimentative if you would like to, just to see what colors work best. You can create test strips if you want to, which are approximately half an inch wide um, by the width of your paper, creating square, uh, rectangles and squares and testing out which colors work best with, the, with other colors. Some of my final details, I did put a few dots utilizing purple in the middle of my flower. And I'm going back in with brown to add the middle sections of the flower petals. I tried to go back in with blue in the middle, but it wasn't showing up, so I I just stopped doing that. Start from the middle, work your way towards the edge. So again, egg yolk as surrounded by egg whites. And I just did a recap at the end of this video segment. Start with your lightest colors, work your way towards your darkest colors, and then go back and add the details. We just finished our watercolor painting of this lovely flower. Um, so if you want, 
we have some supply kits that you're able to get either give us a call go to our website i'll be putting the link directly into our description below in order to get some watercolor paper as well as your very own watercolor paint set uh, up next i have for you a, de a demonstration on how to fully do some lily flowers utilizing some real brush real brush plants that I got from Arteza and uh, we'll go ahead and go
Thank you everyone for joining me on today's workshop. We did some watercolor flowers, so I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our social media accounts as well as follow us on our newsletter for up-to-date information on all of our virtual events. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment section down below and I'll go ahead and get to them. Thank you again and have a good rest of your day.